Hi everyone, my name's Sue Wildman and I'm an art therapist and I'm going to be working with Auntie Bev today and we're going to be showing you how to do some echo dyeing on paper which is tremendous fun and we've kind of worked out a simplified way of doing it so it doesn't take too long and you get some pretty amazing results. Uh, we're going to be dividing uh, into two little videos. The first video is going to be about all the preparation you have to do, which is this video. And that's really essential because if you want to get some really good results, you'd need to do some prep first. And you'll be happy about it once you have. Um, now, just a word about what you've received in your package. You would have received some something like that, only in a, in a small container, plastic container. That's called alum, and it's got a warning on it. So basically what we say to you is to keep it away from any little hands, okay, because it is toxic. But having said that, Aunty Bev and I have worked with that for quite a number of years, but we always work in a well-ventilated area or even outside. You can do it outside and that's really lovely, especially in beautiful weather. Um, that acts as what we call a fixative. So it helps to adhere the colours from the leaves and the flowers to the paper. Really does help. You will have received two of these and they are um, for filling, filling up with... Um, some water and alum and also um, either cold tea or cold coffee. Uh, there are other things you can use but that just gives a really nice sort of effect or else eucalypt leaves that have been soaked for quite a long time, at least a week and, and just drained and put in there because you can get a really nice background that way. Um, you would have received some wax paper and you'll discover why you're going to be using that during the second video. So having said all that, I just want to say that we're going to ask you to go and gather some um, plants and we're going to tell you a little bit about the plants in a few minutes and what you can expect. But I really want to stress, if you see any like native orchids or rare plants like that, just to leave them in the bush. I'm sure you would. And just to take the plants that are plentiful, uh, the leaves that are plentiful and things like wattle, etc. So I really, really hope you enjoy this video and, and enjoy the whole process and have a lot of fun. Thank you. This is sarsaparilla, which is really good for people with diabetes. And you just boil it all up in a big pot, and then once it cools down, you put some in the fridge and you drink it each day. Wow. And it helps keep your blood sugars down. That's really good to know. Mm. And then mm. we're going to test that today, aren't we, to see yes. if it leaves a nice print. So, so yes, that, see how it be. works. And we're just a bit intrigued about how this one is growing into the other one, as though it's resting on it. And it's a eucalyptus, and the eucalyptus leaves are used for medicine, and the wood and the bark are used for tools, and the leaves are used for when people are doing a smoking ceremony. Come on. They create a lot of smoke. And, and I notice when you get one and you squash it up, it's got a beautiful scent, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. Yeah, it just can, good for, mm, the, for the chest. Yeah. And these these um, die very well because some of the ones we've, we've made with and we've put eucalypt leaves down yeah. have looked really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I just thought maybe we'll pick a couple okay. and you can also get um, a few 
not so old ones, but ones with a bit of colour mm -hmm. that might be on the ground. Mm -hmm. What we're really looking for is a, is a really nice yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. Because without the printing we're going to do, we want to get a lovely shape on it. Yeah, not a lot of nice shapes, honestly. There are some beautiful shaped ones here, mm, aren't there? Yeah. So we could just pick a few mm. more of these mm -hmm. for our dyeing. This um, goes right up, look. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It's lovely to see them and to mm. just even smell it mm, uh, when you're in the bush. Yeah. You don't even have to yep. do that. You can still get a beautiful scent. Mm. Okay. Mm. And this is a, one of the varieties of wattle. There are 1,200 species of wattles in Australia. And they're used for the, the bark. And the fibres used for tools. And the gum was eaten and used for an as adhesive. We used to just chew it up and then use it for adhesive. And the seeds were brown and then you eat the seeds, which we still do today. And the wattle may uh, come out really well when you're doing the echo printing. Yep. Um, you usually get the whole outline of the wattle. And it comes out a really bright yellow. But when you're going through the bush, you might find some other, like ones like little puffs of cotton wool, yep. the cotton wool balls. Mm. They come out really well as well. And the branches are used for making clapsticks. Ah, yes. So they're very solid wood. Mm. Yeah. And they're used sometimes for tools, for making tools as well. So there's so yeah. much they use it for. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's wasted. I'm just picking a couple of leaves as well, Bev, that have a bit of colour on them. And, you know, just looking for, again, a few more with a... This has got a beautiful shape, this one here. And um, I'm going to thank, thank the little tree for giving me this leaf. But sometimes if we look down on the ground, we can find some leaves. Now, they don't always take it, the echo printing, but sometimes they do if, if they've got the right sort of colour tone. So I'm going to try that one. Never going to know exactly how it'll come out. But when you're going on your rambling, look for all the different shaped leaves, the ones that you're very drawn to, ones that have got a lot of lines. Well, we're just going to continue and see if we can find some other leaves different from eucalypt now that we know will come out well. Alright, do you think we should try some of these Sue? It's very bright yellow. Yeah, why not? Because mm -hmm. the only way you're going to find out is Give it to go. experiment. So uh -huh. we'll just take a couple, we don't yep. have to take too many. And this is a waratah and originally all the waratahs were white. And then there was a wonga pigeon who was looking for her mate and they mate for life so she was really anxious to find him and thought he must have flown right up high into the tree even though they can't fly very far. So she went up the top of the tree looking for him and then she could hear him down below but an eagle hawk had spotted her and attacked her and tore her chest open. So she fought, fought, fell down and landed on top of a waratah and the blood soaked into it. So then she was able to fly to a few more waratahs and turned them all red and then she died. So that's why we have red waratahs now. Well now we've done a bushwalk and gathered a few f plants. Um, I'd also like to encourage people to go into their gardens and have a look around and also if you don't have a, a big garden you might have a friend who's got different flowers in the garden that you could look at. Um, so we're just going to tell you a little bit about the colours that they go and we've got a few examples behind us. So Beth, do you want to tell us a bit about the wattle? Yeah, um, this wattle is like a little fluffy ball, um, but there are 1,200 species of wattle, 
So wherever you go for a walk, you'll probably find different ones. And um, the yellow comes out beautifully. We've got an example of the colour that the wattle will go. And this is just a very simple technique that we will be teaching you. But that's the colour the wattle will go. And that's this yellow one that Auntie Bev showed you. So we've also got a beautiful um, blue here. And I think that's one of our favourites, isn't it, yeah, Bev? Yeah, and the one over that side, that's the little um, grape hyacinth. This one, Bev? Yeah, that's a grape hyacinth. And that's very come, tiny. come out of beautiful colour. And this one, people may see it's, it's a weed. <laughs> So, you know, there are lots of these around the place. This is what it looks like. You've probably seen it around. And this gives us this remarkable colour here. It comes out of much deeper blue. So, bearing in mind with the technique we're going to do, we get a lot of yellow, so it's nice to have blue. And the one Sue was showing you, the grape hyacinth, that is how it grows. And it's quite purple, but it comes out blue when we dye it. But that's as big as it grows. And then that is always comes out a lovely colour, that... Yes, this pinky purpley one, that comes out blue as well, even though it looks pink when it's growing. So a little daisy. Yeah, it's a daisy. Most of the daisies take well. Doesn't matter what colour they are. Daisies come out really well. This one comes out um, with a beautiful purple inside. And we have some examples here. And this is just a simple daisy that you find in lots of places in the Blue Mountains. And you can see the lovely effect we have with this. In the background, we've got quite a lot of eucalypt um, uh, water, actually, to give this this nice sort of colour. One of the things we use a lot and get really good effect is onion skins. Just doesn't matter what they're like, with how broken up they are or whatever. The red onion skins come out beautifully, but so do the brown ones. So we use those quite a lot. Okay, so I'm going to experiment a little bit um, during part two of this with some onion skins and also some little blue flowers uh, from the garden. Again, just do some experimenting. The only thing is don't ever use deadly nightshade. Not good. Um, what we'd like you to do, so there are two parts of this little um, video. The second part we're going to go through the whole process with you, which is a wonderful process and it doesn't take long and it's rather magical. But what we need you to do is once you've gathered everything, to soak it in water. So get a tray or something like that, soak it in water for as long as you can. So if you can do it for a week, that would be wonderful because it's going to bring out the colours of the leaves far more. You can put the flowers in there as well, but it's really important for the leaves, particularly the gum leaves, and you'll get a really nice rich colour. So once you've got everything, soak it in water for as long as you can, a week, even just a few days. If you can do that, and then next week we'll come back and we'll show you the process. And the packet that you've uh, received has everything you need for the process. Thank you.